Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to create a simple high-low game for PC and mobile in Unity, and welcome to episode 3. In this tutorial we're going to use some C-sharp coding to display our very first card on screen. Don't forget, click subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So currently we have this set of cards over here and we have these two placeholder cards right here. Now the trick is to turn these two placeholder cards into this deck and another deck. So let's take this opportunity to select all of these and place them in one single group. Now what I mean by one single group is keep them all contained just to kind of keep things nice and tidy. So on the number two card right click and click on create empty. And all that will do is create a game object which contains nothing. It literally contains absolutely nothing. It might be worthwhile kind of stretching this out a little bit to fit the size of the cards, but I guess it doesn't really matter too much. Now let's select this game object and align it with this card here, which is going to be the guess card. So drag and drop over here and hold control, press D to create another one and drag that over here to this side. So that means this game object can now be called our guess card. So guess card deck and this second game object can be called guess, no not guess, turn card deck. There we go. I got there in the end. So I'm going to bring this one up here and now I'm actually going to delete the original guest card and the original turn card. Next thing, we're going to place all of these cards from 2 to 14 into guest card deck and you can just see the outlines of those right there but nothing over here. That's how we want it to be right now. So select all those cards and drag and drop them into guess card deck but actually now I think about it what I think might be better is if we actually set this guess card deck over here and then place them all in the reason being is because when I think about it slowly and methodically we don't then need to move everything all back to the same position so if we select all of our cards and place them inside guess card deck when we move guest card deck, we'll be able to move everything together rather than individually. So the next thing we need to do is hold control and press D on all of those. And we will create another set. Next thing we need to do is create uh, or rather move the turn card deck over this one. So they're all on top of each other and all of those duplicates we just created Let's place them inside the turn card deck. So select all and drag and drop them into here. And then let's move turn card deck over here. So now that's all in position. We have our guest card deck, all the cards right there, and our turn card deck right there. So all the cards in, tur in turn card deck can now be turned off. These only appear after we've clicked either high or low. So if we select all of those again, these are all the duplicates, remember, and then select this tick and remove it. Awesome. So all we have here are all of these cards. Now, how are we going to make a card appear? Well, this is where the C sharp comes in. And to kind of make this as an illustrative point so you can see this physically working whenever we press deal card, let's also turn all of these guess cards off. So, off. We see nothing. So, let's get to work on our script to make a card appear. So, let's go to Assets. Let's right click, Create, Folder. We'll call this Scripts. And in here, we need to create a C Sharp script. So, right click, Create, C Sharp script. And we'll call this Deal Card. Now, I have capital D and a capital C no spaces. It is important what you call this script and it will become apparent 
a little later on. So let's then open that up. And it will open up in Visual Studio, but you don't have to use Visual Studio. You could use anything really. A long time ago, there used to be something called Mono Develop, which came with Unity, and you could use that. But most people will be using Visual Studio. So when you open it up, it will look like this. And we're going to go through a couple of things here. Some things important, some things not. The first three lines at the top are known as namespace. And that is, think of it as a way of the script recognizing where it needs to look to get information from. If there was nothing declared up there, then the script would have no idea what it's doing. So by default, that always appears and you shouldn't really play around with it. We don't need to play around with them, at least not the moment. Next, you'll see public class and this is called deal card. You'll notice that right there is the exact same name as what the script is. That's important. The class has to be the same as the script name, otherwise it won't be able to work. Further down, we have an open curly bracket and you'll notice this line all the way down to the closed curly bracket. This is encompassing everything it needs to inside the class. So this is the opening and this is the closing. You'll also notice that it also does apply to these. These are known as methods. So where we've got void start, that's a method. Void update, that's a method. A method contains the code that gets executed. So for example, if we had in void start, uh, we wanted something to appear, that's where the code would be. Now we also have uh, some green here. These are known as annotations. An annotation is a way of kind of indicating or giving a bit of guidance or information on what specific bits of code do. Uh, and they're normally preceded by two front slashes. So if it goes green, it means that line of code won't be executed and it's just for information purposes. So that's basically what we get greeted with when we create a C-sharp script. But what do we need to put in here to make a card appear? So we're going to go simple first off because I know C-sharp coding can be difficult for a lot of people, especially if you haven't coded before or if you're not used to C-sharp or just don't understand. I always feel that with coding, start small and build up. It really helps you understand a lot more rather than diving in headfirst to big, massive, complicated lines of code. So we need to establish what we need to do. Well, first things first, we need a card to appear when we've pressed a button. That card needs to be a variable in this script. So let's start by creating a variable. So if we go to the open curly bracket at the top, which is after the public class, let's declare our first variable, which let's just say is going to be the ace of hearts for now. We're going to say public and its type is going to be a game object. Now, there are multiple different types of variables. And when I say multiple, I mean, well, a lot of multiple different types. Um, but the major ones that we're ever really going to use in this series is integer, game object, and a Boolean. So a Boolean would be true or false. An integer would be like one, two, three, four, five. It'd be a whole number. And obviously a game object would be a game object. So in this instance, we need it to be a game object because that ace of hearts is a game object in our scene. So public game object, and we'll just call this um, dealt card with a semicolon at the end. Now we have to have a semicolon at the end because this allows the script to recognize that this is the end of the line of code, move on to the next one. Now, if you do have any red underlining at any point, you may have typed something incorrect. You may have accidentally deleted something. So just make sure that you have typed everything correctly. And capitalization is massively important when it comes to programming. It, I can't stress enough, it is important. So make sure with game object, it is a capital G and a capital O. Next, let's get rid of this annotation because we don't need it. Let's get rid of this annotation because we don't need it. And in fact, let's get rid of these two methods because we don't need them. We're going to write our own method. So we have a variable here. So the script will know, well, when we tell it what the card is, it will know where that card is. And what we need to do is make it so when we press the button, that card appears. How do we do that? Well, we need to create that method for the button. Now. You saw earlier 
the start method and update method, we'll just void start, void update. When it comes to buttons, we do need to make the method public. So in this case, we go public void, and this can be called anything. You can call the method anything you want, as long as it's not something like Unity Engine or the same name as the script itself. Call it something sensible. So let's say this is going to be um, deal my new card. Open close bracket, parentheses, and open curly bracket. And now we can start typing the lines of code that this script will use to make that card appear. And it is in fact just one simple line of code to make this happen. We need to set it active. So we can say delt card dot set active and in brackets true semicolon. That's all there is to it. And save. So let's go through what we've done here. We told the script that there is a variable called delt card. And when this method is executed, which is called deal my new card, it means that that delt card will become visible. So let's head back into Unity and make sure all this functions correctly. It is just compiling. If you kind of see it freeze for a little bit and then the ring appears, it is just compiling. Don't worry about that. If you do have any errors, check your console and it will display here what the error is in your script. Next thing, thanks Malwarebytes, I do need to update you. Um, so next thing is going to be adding that script to the scene and making it work. So if we go to game object, go on create empty, and I'm going to drag this all the way up to the top. And I'm going to rename this as, uh, let's just have it as settings. So most settings for the game are going to be applied to this game object. So we have one single place that we can play around with and make things work. So let's now add this deal card script to settings. So we can drag and drop up here and you'll see over here, delta card. That's the variable that we created earlier. We can now tell the script and tell Unity what card that delt card is going to be. So let's make it for now just card number two and make sure we're on this guess card deck because it's going to be the one on the left hand side. So drag and drop that over there. Next thing we need to do is make the button know where to find the script for it to work. So if we click on that deal card button and if we scroll down you'll see down here we have on click list is empty. Let's click on that plus there and this appears above it. We need to tell it where the game object is, where the script is. So in this case, it's settings. So drag settings down here and you'll see this no function highlight. It's a drop down list. So we can select from that drop down list our script that we created, which is deal card. And in that list, you should see deal my new card. So if we click that, what this means is that whenever this button is clicked, it will execute that method that we just wrote. And that's really cool. So before we try this out, let's rename this button to be, let's have it as deal button. Nice and simple. And in fact, before we go any further and test this, let's actually play around with some of these colors. Now, what you can do the normal color is you could change it to red if you wanted to, or if you keep it white, it keeps it its original color, which is the texture basically that you downloaded in the last tutorial. But you can have this as any kind of color. If you want to have it a slight blue color, you can do that. But that was just the normal color. Highlighted color, you can select, let's say red. And pressed color, let's say black. And before we go any further now, let's actually test this out and see what these two colors really do to the button. And I've just realized, I think I am still in play mode, which kind of doesn't help things. So actually, this is kind of a great indication of what could go wrong. Now, although we wrote that script, we were all in play mode at the exact same time. So everything we did won't have saved. And to be honest, this is something I get asked about a lot. So they've, someone's done something, they've played the game, made all of this, but then they've tried playing it and it's all reset. So this is a great indication of how all of this works in, in a bad, bad way sometimes. 
always make sure you are not in play mode whenever you're making changes. Now for someone like me, that's pretty quick and simple to kind of redo because ultimately what it comes down to is the experience and swiftness that some people have when it comes to Unity. I guess it doesn't really matter too much, but hopefully you guys were not in play mode when we made all of those changes. Um, so yeah, let's go through that. Guess card deck and we'll move it to there. So basically I'm just formatting it back how it was before everything went wrong. And you'll know, you'll see that everything is pretty much as it was now, to be honest. And we had that as turn card deck, didn't we? Um, so let's move that back up there. Just reorder everything. And we had them all turned off, didn't we? That was right. So they were all unticked. There's been many times when I have been building a game and I've left it in play mode. Don't worry too much, in all honesty, don't worry too much. So let's add the settings back in. And I had that at the top, didn't I? Deal card goes straight on there. And the dealt card is going to be uh, number two, right there. And you can see here just how quick and swift I'm being with this. It all comes with experience. Once you've been using Unity for a while, it just kind of flows and that may have seemed disastrous that nothing saved, but in reality, it's a quick two minute job to kind of put back. Um, so yeah, let's set the button up again. So button, and remember it was plus, add the settings, no function, deal card, and let's go have deal my new card. And we renamed that, didn't we, to deal button. And I think we had the highlighted color as red and the press color as black. So let's press play and let's see how that looks. So if we go over it, you can see that it does indeed highlight red, just like we wanted it to. And if we press it, it will turn black, but when we do press it, it should make that card appear here. Cool. You can see that when we press it, it does indeed make it black. So I'm going to undo that, but I'm actually going to have the press color set as, what should I have it set as? I think I might just have it as, as standard to be honest, but I recommend playing around with it just a little bit. So let's try that once again, just make sure. Cool, it works. Now let's quickly try another card in there, just to make sure everything does work as intended. So let's have the number eight card appear instead. And there we go, that does appear. So you'll notice at this point there is no randomization here, uh, but obviously we do need some. So next tutorial is going to be about randomizing that first card that appears. Uh, should be a lot of fun. Um, we'll see how much further we get from there because I don't think it's gonna to be too difficult to actually randomize a card, but we'll be dealing with uh, randomization and arrays in the next tutorial. So until then, thank you very much for watching, guys.